Welcome to We Genius Minds podcast, coming to you from the future in the midst of these crucial times of change. I am Paulina Amador, your host, director, and producer of the groundbreaking documentary, Evolution, the Genius Equation. I invite you to watch my film at our website, WeGeniusMinds.com. This series expands on the brilliant interviews I conducted with some of the most revolutionary scientists and best-selling authors of our time. Today's podcast is with world-renowned master teacher Ramtha. His Academy of the Mind, Ramtha School of Enlightenment, was established in 1988. To date, his teachings of ancient wisdom and extraordinary knowledge have been attended by more than 100,000 people worldwide. In this first episode, Ramtha speaks about genius mind and how in a quantum vacuum of no space and no time, we already exist 10,000 years in the future. Being a genius, it's not about being a woman. It's about being a genius. So the two cannot conflict. The woman cannot battle. For subtlety, she must be brilliant. You understand? I understand. This is cloth of silver? It's the color of silver. It uh, shines like silver? Or is it nickel? No, it is silver. Let's say it's silver. Ah, it's a platinum. Yes. Ah, you see, we're getting richer by the moment. (laughs) So be that. I am honored to be here today for you. This is a very spiritual route. Spirits travel in and out of mirrors because the mirrors reflect the dimension from which they come. It's not hard to get lost. Beautiful. If you pass a flora and you do not smell it, you insult them. After all, it took a whole year to become that beautiful. Imagine that. I brought these flowers specially for you. They are exquisite. The genius of humanity to learn Genesis and to learn how to improve, expand, unlimit plants and flora and fonda and even animals. Why should people be shocked when today human beings become so brilliant? They can manipulate the DNA of a wee egg and remove its cursed disease. Is that not the same as this? Should celebrate these breakthroughs instead of finding them immoral, moral consequences of designer children. Anything you could do to remove a disease passed on through generations and attitudes is one step closer to the gods. And this, if you love these, then you will love that. So be it. So be that. Let us have a drink. To life. Mm. It's very rare. Do it well. Yes, I assume. And it is my understanding that genius takes us all the way to the elixir of life to immortality, as you just described it. How do we evolve our mind to accept that reality? Do your disciplines. Yes. You want a pill. You want a magic elixir. But if a scientist can remove a flawed gene from a wee egg and replace it with wholeness, Why is that not as empowering as immortality? Because you see, that's going to come next. It is not about taking a pill. The alchemists could never do transmutations unless they were pure heart and mind, and that their passion was the great work, transmutation. And each step transformed them. The school is exactly a school of alchemy but it is of the bind. You wish for me to tell you 
that long understanding uh, where you are when you come to this place, the celebration of God, not of religion, but all creator, understanding one's inevitable and inextricably combined to that Godhead that's created something out of nothing. <laughs> Why would you not have the same possibility? Everyone wants to avoid the efforts and they are afraid that they will all fail. So of course they will do because they create reality. The inevitable pursuit of a passion such as genius and its arrival in is of itself is genius. Of course, who could absolutely have their own mind this day and age and say that it is all theirs? Very few. Do you have such a mind? I accept to have such a mind. Would you send the runner? Yes, but do you continue to do your discipline to change? Do you? Or are you just creating this because it's a superb imagining? No, I do at times, and I absolutely could do more. Do your work as you have been taught. You, every day, all day, self-correct limitations, self-correct the pettiest of judgments. Leave oneself open, because what is blocking it? It isn't that genius comes to you. It is one gives oneself the permission for a flow of superconsciousness that's already there. One has to realize that one has created the crutch that prevents it. So if you were all passionate about this, you'd be on fire to self-correct, as it were. Eh? So now, to answer your question, the elixir of life does exist, was absolutely created, but it was created by those who changed along its progress, mm -hmm. never accepted failure, and went to the next step, unfolding possibilities, reversing elements. It was all done in their mind. If your mind is the enfoldment of quantum reality, then what see you hear, what image you hear, what you focus upon happens here. So that's the reason why the purest entities were able to change it and the impure entities, no matter what they did, were incapable of the great work. And it's called that. Because in the end, there is no one thing, seen or unseen, that does not have its presence and effect through observation, even you, my dear. So if one learns how to do that, then one can become the alchemist. And what changes in the crucible is merely a mirror of what's happening to you. You see? Yes, so it is a progression. A purification, simply put, not of the body, but of thinking. Because whatever sits here, whatever attitude sits here, prevents the rise of superconsciousness already within the brain's multidimensional sphere. So get rid of useless thinking, petty thoughts, the past, what you look like, what you are, what people think about you. You get rid of all those things then you are an alchemist. So be that. You see? Yes, I understand. The common thread that we have is beautiful. Goddess woman, far documentary. And I assume they are all initiates. I would like to name them so we learn more from their stories. I would like to start with Da Vinci because we are very curious about... The Mona Lisa. Yes. Is that... yeah. Himself. Did he come in a female body or was he a crossover? No entity. He was an unfinished soul that still had the frequency of a woman. 
women changed in birth cycles to be reborn because they were so unempowered. They were cattle and they were um, chattel. Their uh, responsibility was to have babies, but no rights, no vision, no anything. So when crossovers happen, your entity, this is a, a unfinished life that never got to express itself. And so it comes back as a male who has dominance in timelines. So you come back as a male, you carry all your female, brilliant imagination and brilliant mind with you. Now you have the power to be your own person. That is all. Was that the case with Da Vinci? We've learned from you that he was a female, but we didn't have the full understanding. Was a female. In a male body. Yes. Beautiful. And his lovely mirror of himself was his grandest work. And that's the reason why I never parted with it. He never wanted to forget what he was. He never wanted to be a complete man. Understand? So be that. So be that. I will start with travel in time and learn more about the ancient Ninhursag. Ah, the mother of souls. From what we have learned, it seems she compromised her godly mind and being a goddess for the power of men. You know I taught you that you only see what you see through the lens of your own perception. So a female looks at this great goddess, which in fact was a scientist, and assumes that she was never regaled with her true powerful self. There is nothing more powerful than a scientist creating life. So never look at this entity or her brothers or her family that she was regarded anything less than an equal. She was. She was the first great scientist. She orchestrated the House of Souls. She made bodies and perfected on bodies, mixing the semen of her brethren with apes until she kept working it and working it and working it until she had something that was pleasing to look at. Why is she called House of the Souls? Because pleasing to look at had to attract a soul. And not all her work was made attractive to souls, so they didn't come. And then finally, a few did. So now, you error when you step on the forehead of men and blame them for what you perceive is a lack of full-flowered skill. Don't ever do that. What is genius? Is neither male or female. You are spirit is neither male or female. The soul has records of identity. So it is gender specific according to its histories. But genius is the spirit the rise of superconsciousness. You look at this great, great scientist. You celebrate this magnificent Sumerian goddess as the creator of human beings, because she surely was. No one can claim that. She's a scientist, a scientist so advanced that she knew how to uh, cross-regenerate in a lab in Africa and in her home in the sky. Is that still happening as we speak? Uh, note you, I have said that you're being upgraded consciously. Some take the new knowledge, suddenly they have breakthroughs, they have insights. Others don't because it's not what interests them. But there is an upgrade been happening to humanity for a while. Wouldn't you say that the upgrade really started happening in the Industrial Revolution. Do you know your history? Hmm, superb. So all of a sudden you move from horse and cart for 15,000 years to a steam engine and an auto machine. 
and a sickle are now electricity and now no more oil burning lamps, candles, tapers. And all of a sudden, the genius came from within one generation. Where do you think that came from? Some of these entities came here intentionally to do that, to upgrade humanity. And look today, in 100 years of your time, you go from a tin Lizzie to a rocket ship in 100 years. When did you begin to vote as a sovereign citizen? 100 years ago? It was 100 years ago, but sooner than that. The thing is, can you not see that for 15,000 years, the utility of uh, <clears throat> movement from camel to ass to steed to cart to uh, litters. Imagine lifetime after lifetime after lifetime having the same mode of transportation and the greatest architecture brought to you by those who came here with the intention to teach architecture and geometry and mathematics. The entities who pursued this certainly didn't create it, but they lavished themselves in new industry and in new invention. So 15,000 years is a stalemate of war, feudal wars, religious wars, wars of any type, wars, blood cousin feuds. And suddenly changed everything when technology was introduced. Did women have a part of that? Absolutely. The greatest mathematicians were women, as you well know, frustrated and suppressed. Still, that was where their mind was. So you see, your flourishing culture of all of the, the bug in the sky and the soul man here, it's really recent intervention in the light of 15,000 years, wouldn't you say? Yes. So, genius, the war geniuses. When you're a genius, that's what you are. You can't help yourself. And you're lazy toward needful things. You didn't pay too much attention. And you are lazy when it comes to affection because you're already filled. You see, that's a very dangerous area for a woman to be in. So now, have I answered your question, given you a ride through history, a refresher course? Yes, and it leads me to ask why women continue to accept that trait. You used two words, frustrated and suppressed. Where does that come from if in the soul, genius mind is not male or female? Why do we have this history? Because you have to make known the unknown. God did not say, and God doesn't say anything, you weren't created to be pampered equals. You were given life. You were given a body to explore this, this three-dimensional experience. You were given a body. Because before that, you lived in other dimensions. Now you're in heavy mass. Heavy. Did God find it, as we would assume, the great source, that somehow you were unequal? There is no rule of law to make known the unknown. Now, there is a story about the suppression of the blue women, historically, and the, the powers that women had, the suppression of women by religion because they were thought to be uh, their menstrual cycles were thought to be demons and unclean and filthy. They were there to take away their power so they could rule men. In the name of God, I do recall that's how it went down. And it is indeed, um, suffering is in itself an experience that either forges passion or undoes the lofty pedicles to which one pursues great heights. In other words, this is the human drama. And once you have unfinished business from one lifetime, you must come back and continue to finish it. And then along the way, you make more unfinished business, so then you have to come back and do two unfinished businesses. And pretty soon, you find yourself 
flooded with uh, an altered ego. I deserve this. I'm suppressed from that. I can't do this. I can't be that. And others said, you're right. You can't because I said so. And it wasn't created or established that men uh, would rule because women allowed them to rule. Always remember the great Amazonian women, greatest fighting force there was. No one ruled them. They took their lovers. They weren't invited. So you see, the Amazons, the great towering women of fierce, beautiful creatures, but warrior class, they made their own reality. So they are condemned through religion. Mary Magdalene was the first pope of the Roman church. When women allow themselves to be subsumed, when they are confused and all they want is love, to be appreciated, to be adored, to be young, to be beautiful, to be jealous of their sisters, for rivalry, how far one has fallen from the mission of making known the unknown. And now we just see the perpetuation of idiocy, the loss, divine power into human master mass. Do you not see that for yourself? So now, do you understand the first goddess is the greatest scientist? Yes, I do. That she's the mother goddess. Mm -hmm. And this is a brilliant being, just like you, millions of years in advance of you, but still, but she never considered herself less in her father's house, always equal, because that's what intelligent beings are. You understand? I do. So your subject matter is on women who lost their way and gave their power back to men. No one can argue that that isn't so. Because historically, and in the annals of reincarnation, it is absolutely all there. Making known the unknown becomes getting the man I want, being rich and favored. You know, it dropped, as it does. So now the women you speak about wanted and craved. And they were women. Perhaps they were men who were born as women, souls of men who were afraid of the war, the warring class, just destroyed everything for centuries and was, did not want to go to battle to be cannon fodder, but wanted to come back as something that wouldn't be thrown into the fields of battle. You understand? Should they come back as beautiful women? Yes, they have a woman's body, but they have a genius mind and spirit. They know, and because they're given the liberty to know, that's what made them free. They weren't attached to being females. They chose to hide. You understand? Yes, I do. Were those the qualities of Mary Magdalene? Was she an initiate? It was a, a, an implant, uh, meaning uh, she came here as her lover and a few others did to set things right with the Jewish people. And uh, the old Egyptians, you know, they all warred. You no, know, one psalm takes a fleck out of history. They go, oh, this was so unfair. I mean, they destroyed. God told them to kill all the Palestinians and not even kill all the flowers. This would be your promised land. How can you promise something that belongs to someone else? And yet, Jehovah told them to do it. So that was his gang. And then and then Isis had her gang. And then uh, the winged god had his gang in South America. They, they were overseas of people. So then it became a game, you know, you know, how that goes indeed, it's competition. So that's just a look at history. But if you see the whole history and what making known the unknown was about and your genesis here, and that being crossovers is quite normal from an opportunistic spirit who just wants to contribute, you see? So we bring a, on board a, a great teacher, raise them from the womb up. 
All they just needed was a baby and they gave it their soul and spirit. And they already knew. That's what one has had to do to evolve. It's the same as the Industrial Revolution. You know, some of these beings, you know, they came from the future. Going back and correcting some things. That's how it works. So we may be talking about genius women and genius men of mind, but all together is genius spirit, alive and well, and no gender. You just spoke of beings, implants coming from the future. I would use a number, millions of billions of years into the future. I mean, not so far. For me and women in this time that are open to a genius mind, how do we close that gap? By not worrying about it. When you're a genius, then you would understand mathematics better. And you would understand quantum physics. I say that because it is observation of particles outside of space-time. And what is said, they're all particles past, present, and future exist simultaneously. When you pair two photons together and, and send them separate ways, what happens to one happens to the other one. So that is, that is within a vacuum of no space-time. Now, let's assume for a moment that you are one of those particles that is split from you are 10,000 years from now. What's happening now to you is happening to them. But you see, in quantum measurement, there is no time and space. So all things happen at once. Multiple universes, the Earth is in multiple time frames based strictly on the arrow of time. So the Earth's already existing here. You are already existing here as your future self, just as the photons imagine. We can't get away from that because we are all created in light. So how do we differentiate one light source from another? Do we really demean photons by, well, it's just a lab result? Well, it's led to quantum computing and it is led to all sorts of fabulous, mesmerizing technologies. Do we say that it is remote and away from us? No, what happens in the quantum world happens to us. So now, lovely lady, you are alive 10,000 years, 500 years, and you're influencing you. And you haven't heard yet, but it, you're talking to you. You know, hello down there, do you hear me? And when you open up to it, Instead of saying, well, am I a genius now? The very fact you've opened up a dialogue suggests much. Don't you agree? It would suggest that you understand quantum computing and the absence of time and space, and that when we put them all together, yes, that there is another Earth that exists right here. Or maybe you're on another planet. Maybe you're in a realm. Ah, ah, maybe you're in a dimension. Hmm, same thing. It's time flow. In other words, wherever you are, you're connected to yourself. You see? Will you send the runner so that I can experience what you taught me? Yes. Do you have you ever wondered what your spirit is? Contemplated it. It's God, it's the Holy Spirit. It is the force between these two as they dream reality into material existence. And don't you think? that along the way that you were living in all of those different frequencies, well, how splendid of you to agree. <laughs> <laughs> Your spirit is you here and you there. Easy communion. I accept the runner. So be that. So be that. Now all of this, we begin to visualize in a different format. It isn't women struggling against men is women struggling against themselves. So be that. What are those struggles? To be taken seriously. Whether you are, whether you are a great physician, it comes to you naturally, 
because somewhere else your other self is a great physician. And so you share this common denominator. And so you're a great physician, but you are a woman. So like a special, you have to dress up like a man. Right? Is that a big thing for a special? Well, it's never a big thing. She'd cut all of her hair off. Parted her bosom. Who cares? She wanted to heal people. What a lovely manifestation. Was it about that she suffered? She overcame it. Adversity heightens the headiness of knowledge. So struggles sometimes are superficial. We think we are suppressed by someone. And it has to be. It has to be men's society. It has to be women's society. It has to be religion. It has to be something. Well, we are. We've accepted that there is. And because there is, there will always be suffering when in fact, it really isn't. The moment you know you can do anything, that'll be your greatest passion. It's my channel's greatest passion was me and the school for into our new century. Most people don't know how she did it. Just ask her. She loved me and God more than all else. That's a warrior class. So, in tolerating men, somewhere in her mind, she thought she had to do that. Because after all, she just does have children, loves her children. But that was not where her mind was. And that doesn't make her a crossover. That just made her brilliant. You see? So now, it is what we assume is our burden, our block. No one ever put it there but ourselves. Don't you agree? Wow, wasn't that outrageous? We hope to have inspired you. Join us for part two of our futuristic conversation with the unique master teacher, Ramsa the Enlightened One as we continue to reveal the great gods and goddesses of ancient civilizations and the ultimate elixir of immortality. Make sure to subscribe to our newsletter and don't miss our groundbreaking film, Evolution, the Genius Equation, at our website, wegeniusminds.com.